and the ones that i liked were like 15 20 grand and i'll just say like, sis no no we're not about to spend that much money on the dress we wear once and i will not wear again there was this expectation that mm, kim's dress is going to be that bomb.com even like my family did not spare me my mom was like ah your dress better be nice so so i had a lot of pressure that i was dealing with when i was designing and making the dress Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time seeing me, my name is Priscilla. I'm a Nigerian women's wear designer based in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my wedding dresses, which I did make. I made my main wedding dress and my reception outfit. And I'm going to talk to you guys through how much it cost me, the materials I used, where I got the materials, and a realistic expectation in terms of how long it took me. Now, if you'd like to find out more about these, make sure to keep on watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it i'm going to leave all links down below for anyone who wants to check out a particular fabric or check out a vendor where i got this materials from with that being said let's get into this video i have i have literally written down i've kept all the receipts because i just wanted to be as accurate as possible and give you a close to true would i say a close to true amount or a close to true figure so you know how much the whole thing actually cost me okay let's get into this video so the reason why i decided to make my wedding dress was because when i went to try on wedding dresses the ones that i could afford were very basic very simple and the ones that i liked were like 15 20 grand and i'll just say like, sis no no we're not about to spend that much money on the dress we wear once and i will not wear again so for the wedding dress itself <laughs> oh that dress stressed when you say something stressed me it's not even the physical work of making the dress it's the mental tasking side of it and that pressure that you want it to come out perfect that was what i found very frustrating it's not even like the materials or like the sewing or the stitching is that mental pressure especially for me because i have a youtube and i do sewing content there was this expectation that mm, kim's dress is going to be that bomb.com even like my family did not spare me my mom was like ah your dress better be nice so so i had a lot of pressure that i was dealing with when i was designing and making the dress and that was the tough part for me if i'm being honest not even the actual making it was the mental side so i just thought i should say that for anyone who's actually going to do this the emotional and mental stress is very high but it is doable i promise you it is absolutely doable okay so we're going to start with the main wedding dress and i have a list here of i ended up getting about 14 things so fabrics trims the under bust cup the right underwear hooks all those things i have them here so this includes the wedding dress the veil and the detachable train which i added on like verylastminute.com so i have the wedding dress here i had to put it on two hangers because one hanger could not just carry the weight of this dress and this is what it looks like here so let's start from the most obvious material which is this lace here this lace i actually got on aliexpress and i went in stores i checked other like sewing supply stores and i wanted a lace that had a particular shape so i checked everywhere and ended up finding it on aliexpress and this one is made with sequin beads that's how the pattern of the lace is created this is how the lace comes it just comes transparent like this and i got a bundle of six meters it was just enough like if i had made any mistake on that dress if i had to cut any extra panels enough for rich so it was just enough i ended up paying 30 pounds for this lace off of aliexpress so 30 pounds is just for the lace no lining no extra thing so that's the first material that i got 
So because the lace was transparent, I knew I had to get some kind of lining that would match it in terms of color and weight. So I went for simple creped back satin and this one I got in white. Now the lace itself is actually vanilla cream. Hmm. I'd never realized all of this until after, after I had finished the dress that there were very many shades of white. So this is white. My wedding dress lace was vanilla cream, so it was not exactly as white as this and it wasn't exactly cream. It was like an in-between, but because I lined it with this white crepe back satin, it brightened up the lace even more. Now, this fabric I used so much of, I think I ended up getting like 18 meters and it was 599 a meter. So this particular fabric I spent over a hundred pounds. I think I spent a hundred and seven pounds and some pence because I used it to line the lace. I used it to make the detachable train. That's the second fabric that I got. So the dress aside from the lace and the lining of the lace had another layer of lining underneath and I wanted that lining not to be very heavy because the wedding was in July so it meant it was going to be a warm or a humid day so I didn't want anything that would make the dress thicker or heavier so I got like a really fine white lining it was like a polyester lining and it wasn't cotton based in any way so that lining was really cheap but I got so much of that lining because I used it to line the entire dress and I used part of it on my detachable train for like the lining panel underneath how much did I even pay for that lining Seth? So the lining, um, I ended up paying about 16, 16 pounds for eight meters because that's how much I got based on my receipt here. And I just used it to line the dress and I used it to line my detachable train as well. The next thing I got was boning because I wanted the dress to have some structure, especially on the front. Now the thing with evening wear bridal dresses is you want the this the dress to be smooth on your body because a lot of times they are quite fitted and if they don't have boning to stretch out the fabric what you see happening is when you sit and stand the fabric will gather in certain places like horizontally so i added two boning channels on the front i had side boning channels but i took them out because they were just very uncomfortable so i just had boning here boning there just on like the two side front seams on the lining panel now if you've seen the wedding dress making series you'd have seen the particular positions where i actually place the boning channels on the lining of the dress i didn't get a lot of boning i think i only got about a meter because i only needed it for here and here but it cost me roughly one to two pounds for the boning that i use it was a simple plastic boning now to add more i would say dimension and personality to the dress i got these lace trims that i put along the neckline these ones were about 1.5 inches wide were nice and delicate and then the ones i put on the bottom of the dress along these scalloped edges here these ones were a lot wider these ones were about three inches now for the slim lace trim which i put on the neckline and then i put on the cuff of the sleeve this one i think i only got about two meters and it cost me five pounds and 29 pence how much was that all together Seth? so for the slim lace trim i ended up paying 10 pounds and 58 pence which i used for the cuff and for the neckline whereas for the wider lace trim which i put along the bottom of the main dress and the bottom of the detachable train and the waistband of the detachable train I think I got about nine meters of that trim. I got like five meters first, then I went back and got like another four meters. I ended up spending 47 pounds and 61 pence just for this thick lace trim here. What else did I get? What else did I get? So because I had to get in and out of the dress, I obviously got a zip to sit on the center back. I got a nice white invisible zip because I didn't want to have to deal with ropes and eyelets and all those things that traditional bridal wear we have. I just got a simple invisible zip to just do up and down. And I made sure I got a really high quality one. I got the one from YKK because they make very good zips. I didn't want the risk of the zip breaking, or the zip doing one thing that I didn't want it to do. So I just got really good zip that cost me about two, two pounds, I would say. I'll just be putting up the price here, this side of the screen, so you guys would see 
correct price of the different items that I mentioned in this video. Now the dress was a mermaid silhouette and I wanted the bottom to have some volume which made me get a petticoat. Now I got a ready-made petticoat from Amazon that sort of had a top section made in Jersey and the bottom section that had the tool and the poofiness and the gathering. And what I did with that petticoat was, you could either wear it on the day, just wear it under your dress, but because the back of my dress had a, had a detail that would show part of the petticoat, I just went and cut the, the the poofy part of the petticoat and attached it around the knee area. So I just hand stitched that on the inside. I don't think I showed that in the wedding dress making process video or the series, but that was what I did. I just got the petticoat ready made, trimmed off the top half of it, and then just stitched in the part that really had the volume to the bottom of the dress. That petticoat cost me about, I think it was 17 pounds. How much was it? The petticoat cost me 18 pounds and I got it off Amazon. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to share all links down below to all the materials that I used. Now for the sleeve, I knew I did not want it to be made in the same lace because that lace has some body and it would not really have that like floaty effect that I wanted the sleeve to have. If you have not already noticed by now and if you've been following my creative journey for a while, I love poofy sleeves, I love round silhouettes, I love playing with shapes and volume and I knew my wedding dress was going to have a poofy sleeve detail somewhere. So I used organza for the sleeve. This one is just a simple white organza that has some shine to the surface. I just got, um, I think I got two meters. I used a meter for my twirl and then I used the remaining meter on the main wedding dress itself. This organza actually cost me two pounds for the two meters. So I think it was a pound a meter for the organza that I used for the sleeve. Now the thing about delicate fabrics like this is, oh gosh, you're so annoying to sew. Like it's so finicky and any foul swoop of your needle on the machine and you are picking and starting all over again but when it's done well it actually adds a very soft and delicate feel to an entire look such as like the way it added this to my wedding dress now for the day of the wedding the veil that i wore i did not make i bought that veil already made like that with the lace trim and it's this veil here it had the hooks already there it's really nice and long and it has the lace trim all along the edges, the bottom up to the side, but it didn't have the part on the front where, you know, the part that you used to cover your face. I kept going back and forth. I kept asking everybody, so do we cover our faces? Is this still a thing? And I was like, you know what? I might as well just like complete the whole look. So my friend Tam actually helped me cut out a piece from another veil that I bought and we attached it to the head part of this second veil here. So I ended up combining two veils to make the veil that I wore on my wedding day. So it had this part in the front, which went over my face, and then she hand stitched it. Ah, oh, God bless her. This was a day to the wedding that we're doing all this madness. And she helped me to unstitch it up here like so. So that way I had a veil that was cohesive in terms of feel to my dress and added a bit of drama in terms of the length. Now, the veils that I used both cost me about 85 pounds. It, was, it wasn't the cheapest veil, but I knew I had that extra bit of money to spend on things to make the whole look, you know, look more expensive and more, <laughs> can I say fairy tale? Just like that, like dreaminess of it all. So that was how much the veil cost me. I think it cost me 84 pounds and 31 pence and I got it from AliExpress as well. AliExpress? Yeah, AliExpress as well. Now because of how the neckline on the front and on the back was on the dress, I knew I had to get the right underwear to go with the wedding dress. Now this is something a lot of people don't think about until two days before the wedding and they realize, oh, it's a low back or it's see-through. I need to like get something that, you know, just create a nice finished look. So I got this bra that has this pads on the front and then it has this sticky panel on the side and if you look on the inside as well it has this it also has the sticky panels here 
So when we put the bra on, because my bridesmaids literally dressed me up that morning of the wedding, when we put it on and put on the dress, because of how fitted the dress was, this gave me a bit of support without you seeing any underwear, especially for the back, because the back of the dress was really open. So I knew I could not wear any kind of underwear that would show. I just wanted, you know, that part to be completely open and very sexy. So this was the underwear I used for the top half. This actually cost me seven pounds and 19 pence. And I think I found it on a website called One Buy. They had other similar type of like ambiguous underwear that could go with dresses that had a lot of open parts. And this was what I ended up using. Now I went for black because I knew you wouldn't be able to see the black through the white. Um, you could do nude, but when I tried white, the white was just so obvious. So black was the option that I went for. Now for the bottom half, I got myself some seamless underwear from good old Max and Spencer's. You know the type that is like low rise, it goes around your bum cheeks and it doesn't have any seams. So when I had the dress on, you wouldn't really be able to see that I had underwear. I got that in black. I think it was a set of three. So I, I couldn't decide if I wanted to get black or like my skin tone color and I just got both. So and that ended up costing me like 28 pounds just for underwear. Help, God help us, just for underwear. All right, so I think we're nearing the end. Now the last two things I got for the wedding dress was I got a hook and bar set, which allowed me to put on the detachable train on the back of the dress. This cost me about a pound. And then I also got some simple elastic, which I used for the top and I think it was only for the top of the sleeve. I, I just got about half a meter and that was like 50 pence. Now the whole dress actually cost me less than 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> As it, the whole dress cost me less than 400 pounds, but it looked like it was worth about two to three thousand pounds. Like someone kept asking me, if you were going to charge a bride for this same style, how much would you ask? I was like, see, eh, the dress is not expensive. It's the work that goes into making sure that it is done well and the finish is beautiful. That's where the expensive part comes in. So only the materials cost me 380 pounds and 51 pence, everything. That's how much it cost me. Now that's excluding of my jewelry, and my shoes now for the reception outfit i i think i spent a lot less time and a lot less money because the design was not as complex and not as complicated as the main wedding dress now for the reception piece it had this lace let me just show you the the lace that it had so it had this um cream lace that had a nude lining now the lace I got off AliExpress as well and I paid 31 pounds for six meters. But for the jumpsuits, I only ended up using about two meters of the lace. So I have so much left over of that lace here. Now the lace I lined with this nude lining because I just wanted this design to pop a lot more. Else I would have used a white lining and you wouldn't have been able to really see like this detail that the lace has. Now the lining I got cost me about four pounds because I got two meters of the lining just for the jumpsuit itself. Now the jumpsuit is double lined, meaning that the lining you can see and the lining that you cannot see are two different colors. <laughs> I just sounded so complicated. Why is it double lined? So the lining on the inside is gold and the lining on the, on the side, which is visible to most people is nude. Can somebody tell me why I did not use the same color of lining? I think it's because I wanted this. I initially wanted to use the gold as the main visible lining. And then when I got home, I put it against my skin. I put it against my shoes, my jewelry, which I already had. I was like, it just made more sense to have this color of lining as a visible lining that people would see. So the inner lining I got two meters off and it cost me about four pounds. It was a very inexpensive polyester lining as well. And the jumpsuit is fully lined all the way to the bottom. So I didn't feel any kind of itchiness because this thing is sequenced. All of this is sequenced. And against the skin, it's not the most comfortable feeling. So I knew I wanted 
a bit of extra security in terms of lining now the jumpsuit has a zip on the back so i could get in and out of it the zip was really good quality as well zip and this cost me about two pounds and for extra support on the inside i got this it's an actual bra i wouldn't just say it's a cup because i feel like I would, i'm going to undo it and wear it as an actual bra now on the inside there is actual support here and what this did for me on the day was because this was the outfit that was dancing as in when i say dancing proper dance go low arms in the air kind of dance so i wanted something that would keep the girls nice and secure and i wouldn't have to think of oh, is my jumpsuit falling off my chest am my nipple exposed mm -mm. this bra gave me that support now this is a bra from wonder bra and it actually cost me 42 pounds that's why i say after sometimes i'm just going to peel it off because i just stitched it onto the neckline here here and somewhere along this line here i think once once i'm ready to wear this i'll take it off because i think this is a nice strapless bra that has very good support and it just keeps everything intact and in place for dresses that you know you cannot wear a bra that has strap so that was something else that you know made the price of the reception outfit go up just a little bit but not too much and i knew i wanted something just to make the outfit pop so i made this extra piece <laughs> that i wore for 0 0.2 seconds which was like a half i'll say it was like a half jacket because it had one shoulder it had a lapel that went down and it buttoned up the side it was a very nice piece to like you know walk into the room and everyone was like wow your outfit looks nice and twirled and there was a video i made <laughs> my plan actually made this video. it looks just so perfect i'll put up the video here so i, I walked into the room and then I twirled and because I had this on, it just looked so, so cool. Now this I made with creped back satin, but in ivory. So it's not the same shade of white as the creped back satin I used for the main wedding dress. Now it's all satin through and through, the collar, the waist belt, everything but it has two buttons on the side now the crepe back satin i used for this i think i ended up using about six meters because it has it has a really nice train it has some volume so is it you know it twirls well it twirls well it moves well when i twirl in it so i ended up spending about how much did i spend on this 35 pounds and 94 pence for all of the crepe back satin that I used for this and then the button cost me about a pound because it was like 50p per button uh, I think that's everything I used gosh now the reception piece cost me 119 pounds and 94 pence and I found that I made the outfit in about I think it was two to three days because this outer piece I didn't even do a pattern for the bottom half I just draped it straight on the mannequin I was just cutting pinning sewing cutting pinning sewing and I, I found that it allowed me to be creative in the sense of how much volume and flow I wanted on that bottom half of the piece the top half I actually made a pattern for and it was just like um, one shoulder asymmetric pattern and then I did a lapel that went all the way around across the shoulder to the back i fitted this on made any corrections and i did a waistband connecting the top to the bottom the jumpsuit i literally made in like a day or a day and a half it was pretty straightforward because i already had trouser pattern and a strapless bodies pattern which i just cut stitched tried it on and i was done so all in all I found it a lot easier to make the reception piece it was there wasn't as much pressure and i think i only wore this reception piece for i think it was three hours tops because i changed into the reception piece after we had done our first dance we had cut our cake and we did this like funny game i was like okay i have to wear this reception piece i've spent money so i went i changed into it this one i took off i think i only had this on for like half an hour tops because i was dancing and i just like took it off and i just left the jumpsuit on for the rest of the night so i ended up not wearing the reception piece for very long but it was definitely worth it i regret not getting better pictures because i think the only pictures i got <laughs> was the ones that my planner took of me in the changing room so maybe in the future if i have like an event to go to i might wear it again and photograph the outfit a lot more professionally 
But with that being said, gosh, this was such an experience. I would do it again, but I'll do some things differently. Now, the first thing is I would try to decongest myself in terms of workloads so I could have focused more on the dress. Because in June, I was still doing a pop-up. Like, I think six weeks to my wedding, I was still, I had never even cut the dress. I think I started cutting my dress like four weeks to the wedding. So I, I left it till last minute and that was, that was very bad because I gave myself unnecessary pressure. The second thing is I should have double checked that all the shades of white were the same shade of white because it was not until the morning of the wedding I realized the veil was one shade, the dress was one shade, the train was another shade and I was like, I beg. I don't finish. There's nothing I can do at this point. And I just wore it and had a good time all the same. Another thing I would have done is maybe worked with a lace that had stretch for the main wedding dress because gosh, that dress was so tight. I could barely breathe. Like getting in the car was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life because because of the bowling, I could not bend. So my bridesmaids had to I had to sit like this and then turn sideways and then they put my feet in the car. And you know those nice wedding pictures you get of the couple sitting in the car? We could not take those pictures because I looked so awkward. So yeah, definitely some fabric with stretch or place the boning slightly differently to allow up and down movement because sitting down, wow. I, I could not believe sitting down was as hard as it was on the day of the wedding. Like if you guys have experienced this on your wedding day or you've worn an outfit that it was so tough to sit in, please let me know in the comment section down below so I don't so I know I'm not the only one that went through this ordeal, okay? Now the last thing I think I might have considered is to outsource the sewing of the outfits to someone else. Maybe source the fabrics, design them, I would do the twirl, but I think I would have just given somebody take, just so it, I would do fitting and then you can just give me, because that way I would have not felt the amount of pressure I felt to attain perfection. Cause honestly, like there was a day, I think it was like three days to the wedding. I just broke down at breakfast and I would, I just felt so much pressure to deliver. Like, ah, the dress had to be perfect. It had to be this, it had to be that. And I wish I didn't have to deal with that, but I guess that's, that's all part of like the whole wedding what, palaver and wedding stress because oh, that did not feel nice at all, at all, at all, at all. So both dresses ended up costing me 509 pounds and 44 pence. Wow, that was a good deal. But if you guys know any other tips, please share in the comment section down below. I would love to know and I think it would help somebody who is considering making their wedding dress or is in the process of making it themselves. But if you did enjoy this video, if you found it useful, don't forget to share it with your community or anyone that you think will find it useful. Give it a thumbs up because it helps my videos and it helps my channel a lot. Leave any comments, any suggestions as well. And I think this video is going to be either the second to last or one of the last few videos in the wedding series. Until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening wherever you are. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.